Thank you so much for joining the webinar. We're waiting for folks to join us and we'll be getting started shortly. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining uh, CTA Wireless Foundation's second of two informational webinars about our Catalyst 2021 program. I have just three o'clock uh, Eastern time and we're going to get started. Um, my name is Dory Krieger. I'm executive director of the CTA Wireless Foundation and my colleague Yael Cor Colburn is also with us today and she is the program manager of the foundation. We'll be here to answer all of the questions that you have. Um, before we get started and as others join us, let's go over what we're gonna cover today. So first we're gonna talk about a little bit about who CTIA is and the Wireless Foundation. Um, what is Catalyst? We'll give you a little bit of background on the what and why of the program as well as this year's focus area of health and well-being. We'll also provide uh, some guidance for applicants as you begin the process and answer any questions that you have. Um, we encourage you to submit your questions through the chat box throughout the webinar. Um, feel free to do that. And of course, uh, we'll do our best to answer our, all of the questions. Uh, our first informational webinar, we had a lot of really good ones, which was fantastic. If we don't get to your questions, please don't hesitate to email them to us afterwards and we'll provide that contact information. So I wanna get started and give you a quick snapshot of CTIA as the Industry Trade Association for the Wireless Industry and its philanthropic arm, CTIA Wireless Foundation. CTIA has over 250 members, including AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, T-Mobile, and the likes of Intel, Samsung, Qualcomm, and more. Uh, the association advocates for legislative and regulatory policies at the federal, state, and local levels, um, with the notion of fostering continued innovation, investment, and increased economic impact of America's wireless industry. The association also convenes uh, members of the industry, the whole wireless ecosystem, to coordinate best practices and initiatives, develop test plans and certification processes for mobile devices, and ensure security of mobile networks and devices, enhance accessibility, and more. CTA also promotes its members by building awareness among policymakers and the public, and we host events on topics like 5G, cybersecurity, privacy, infrastructure, and public safety. For 30 years, CTI Wireless Foundation has championed wireless for good by enhancing new applications of wireless technology that enhance our lives and address challenges in American communities. We were started by CTIA members themselves. Now we're looking to the future by supporting bold social entrepreneurs Wireless is at the heart of our modern lives. I think a lot of us who are on this webinar know that. It really defines how we connect with one another and constantly reveals new opportunities to change the way we work, communicate, and live. We're looking to the future by supporting those bold social entrepreneurs and focus on new applications of wireless technology that improve the quality of our quality of life, strengthen our communities, and build new connections to the future. And we do all of this through three programs. Catalyst is our premier initiative. And of course, this webinar is focused on that. Um, but I also wanted to share our two others, our accelerator partnerships. We support nonprofit and mission-driven enterprises 
that accelerate tech focused entrepreneurs work to achieve the desired impact using wireless. We look for organizations that really help with mentoring and educational programs to help social entrepreneurs grow their enterprise. We also host a number of educational um, events around the FCC and the Hill, hoping to educate their staff, policymakers and their staff. Um, we feature exhibitions, demonstrations, and interactive displays of CTIA members. Um, we look to showcase the cutting edge technologies and help educate staffers and policymakers on the benefits and transformative impact of wireless innovation on society. The why you guys are here is for Catalyst. First, I wanna take a moment to thank our sponsors who help make the program possible, particularly our lead sponsor, Qualcomm. We are incredibly grateful to their continued support and the support of all of our sponsors to make Catalyst 2021 possible. So I mentioned CTI Wireless Foundation supports emerging change makers, and we want to do that in the crucial early stages of development through our signature initiative Catalyst. Um, as it says here, it's a competitive grants program um, that accelerates the work of social entrepreneurs using wireless for good. And our focus uh, this year is on health and well-being. We are operating at the crossroads of discovery, access, and human connection. And Catalyst wants, we're seeking to really push the boundaries of what is possible through wireless technology. A hallmark of our program is the strategic targeting of emerging change makers and social impact projects, which benefit greatly from infusions of capital early in the stages. So we are definitely looking for folks that are beyond proof of um, beyond an idea stage. We're looking for proof of concept to help catalyze um, those social enterprises to the next level. We really want to advance forward thinking innovators that are taking advantage of the speed, efficiency, and versatility of wireless technology, really to deepen our connection to one another and make our communities stronger. You'll see we have three rounds Part of, that are part of the program. The initial stage, round one, is what we're calling our letter, letter of intent. And you actually answer a series of questions on our, um, on our online portal. Um, it's catalyst21.skilled.com, and we have that web address for you later on in the program so you can see, so you can get started. Our deadline is April 6th, um, so we really encourage all of those attending uh, to, to start to register and get working on their letter of intent. After that first stage of the process, we're gonna be contacting um, folks for an invitation only round. And those people will be submitting a full proposal. That full proposal will be due in May. And then from that, we select three finalists who are gonna be our award winners. I mentioned our semi-finalists are chosen after the letter of intent phase in April. Um, those are the folks that will be invited to submit a proposal. Those semi-finalists who have submitted a full proposal, it's new this year, we're gonna be giving each of those organizations a thousand dollar grant. So that's separate and beyond um, the, the three award, three actual awards at the end of the program. We wanted to acknowledge that emerging organizations um, it takes a lot of time and energy to submit these letters of intent and to pursue these funding opportunities. So it's just a, a, a token of our appreciation for the hard work that you all are doing. Last year, we chose six semifinalists. Um, this year, it really depends on the quality of the applications we receive. We could see six semifinalists, but we could also go up to 10. So the proposal stage happens in May. Uh, Full-blown proposals are submitted, and then we have a group of Catalyst advisors who are gonna be reviewing these proposals. And I'll talk a little bit more about the advisors in a few minutes. But here's what, how some of the benefits of participating in the program. Certainly on the left-hand side of your screen, you'll see there's a, there's a financial reward award at the end of this program, but there are a lot of non-financial benefits um, and incentives too. We really um, take it seriously to help uh, raise awareness of your work uh, among wireless industry leaders. So we take a lot of time and energy to promote 
uh, your work across CTIA and CTIA Wireless Foundation channels. We also offer an opportunity to meet with elected officials and policymakers, and we certainly help prep folks for those meetings too. And then we're trying to create a sense of community here. So we want to make sure we want to have our winners come part of our Catalyst alumni and the CTI wireless community. Um, I would encourage you to check out our blog wire on wirelessfoundation.org under the news section. We interviewed our winner last year, um, our Catalyst 2020 uh, first place winner, Objective Zero Foundation. And we met with the founders and they answered the question, why Catalyst? Check out that blog um, if you're interested in applying and see what a past winner really took away from the program. Here is our panel of five advisors, each with a different expert perspective to bring to bear. These are the folks that are going to be reviewing the full proposals and narrowing down our semifinalists to our three finalists. As you can see, we have a diverse roster here. We have current healthcare entrepreneurs, philanthropy professionals steeped in the world of social innovation and social entrepreneurship. We also have um, an academic with knowledge of tech innovation and certainly healthcare as well. We wanted to give you a flavor um, of why the foundation chose to implement an initiative like Catalyst to keep in mind as you're filling out the, that questionnaire or letter of intent. There are three big drivers of, behind the genesis of Catalyst. As a leading trade association working with wireless companies throughout the United States, CTIA understands the potential of new technologies will have to improve the fabric of our society. And to take advantage of the transformations in wireless technology and communications in the era of 5G, we know that we need agile, innovative, and daring visionaries who can put the work of put wireless to work to improve the state of health in our society. So the CTI Wireless Foundation is looking for new and innovative ideas. We want to recognize that those ideas. Catalyst goes beyond capital by providing an open call and it, by providing an open call, we allow the foundation to partner with emerging organizations and social entrepreneurs and offer, offer a series of non-financial benefits like I mentioned previously. So Catalyst 2021 seeks to accelerate wireless innovation for health and well-being of Americans. Um, for this year, we're looking to fund and support solutions that leverage wireless technology to produce healthier outcomes for individuals and communities. We see an opportunity for those uh, solutions to have an outsized impact, and we're looking for those emerging social entrepreneurs to help us solve them. Despite the proliferation of innovations that increase access to, improve the quality of, and lower the cost of healthcare in the United States, there are still many challenges uh, to improve the health and well being of Americans. In 2020, COVID 19 exacerbated existing health disparities. Women have higher rates of COVID 19 infection, and the pandemic has had an outsized negative impact on BIPAC individuals and communities. And there are more than 2.5 times the number of cases and 4.0 times the number of hospitalizations for indigenous, black, and Hispanic populations when compared to their white counterparts, according to federal data. The pandemic has also worsened mental health in the United States, particularly for the groups already hit hardest. A new study by the Centers for Disease Control estimates that more than four in 10 Americans are struggling with mental health issues stemming from the coronavirus. We believe that wireless technology is well positioned to help create a stronger, more accessible health sector for all Americans. In the context of the pandemic, the demand for remote health care, largely facilitated by wireless connections, continues to increase, granting access to services and resources that might not have been previously available due to cost or logistical hurdles, or they weren't actually safe to provide in person. Wireless and the advent of 5G has been expanding the possibilities to improve Americans' health and well-being outcomes pre- and post-pandemic. In fact, 84% of healthcare executives said that wireless innovations, including 5G, will generate better patient outcomes. 
Here are three general categories of solutions that can help alleviate the problem to find and the opportunities that we're looking for pursuit. Scaling up, advancing, or innovating promising health interventions, such as mHealth, telemedicine, or healthcare data analytics, especially to address the health equity, as I mentioned previously, related to race, gender, socioeconomic status, and location. We're looking to reduce physical and financial barriers to accessing quality health care, either in person or virtually. We're also interested in providing mental health services or supports and leveling the playing field of access to those services for BIPOC communities and individuals, women and veterans. We're looking for your solutions to use wireless to address these issues. So who should apply? Let's go over um, some of our guidelines for applications first. These are helpful kind of uh, four points um, that foundation staff and advisors will be looking for, and particularly in our first and second rounds. We're looking for applicants applicants who have made or have demonstrable potential to make noteworthy contributions to the impact to impact the field of health and well-being using wireless technology, especially in communities that lack access to quality care. Applicants who have experience working through business incubators, accelerators, or mentorship programs. Applicants who demonstrate a commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion in their business practices and in the design and execution of their programs. And Catalyst will also prioritize BIPOC women and or veteran-led applicants using wireless technology solutions to support or focus on their communities. All important eligibility. CTI Wireless Foundation operates in the United States and represents the wireless community industry nationwide. Therefore, applicants must be registered to operate in the United States. And in compliance with legal obligations of the foundations, applicants must have one of the following legal structures. Nonprofit organization, for-profit enterprise with a demonstrated commitment to social good, or a B corporation. To avoid any potential conflicts, applicants cannot be past or current CTIA members during any point of the awards process. And to ensure equity and fairness during the review process, applicants must have completed all requested materials and submitted them by the deadlines. Later incomplete applications will not be considered. Finally, I want to go over you know, a quick preview of what's required to what you're required to submit in that first round. So this is our submissions process. Again, the submission deadline is April 6th um, by 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. So here we have listed what the letter of intent should include. And again, you'll be going to Catalyst 21 dot skilled dot com to answer a series of questions that will then comprise your letter of intent. We're looking for a brief description of your founding story, a brief description of your organization, including its mission and vision for near and long term impact. We're looking for the description of the role of wireless technology in achieving the organization's social and business goals. We're also looking for a brief des description up to one page of how the organization would use the funds if awarded in line with the problem and opportunity statements that we reviewed earlier, including the charitable purposes served. We'd like a current operating budget and high level growth projections. And we'd also like an overview of the organization's geographical coverage. I should say that a lot, all of the information I've shared is on the foundation's website, wirelessfoundation.org. Um, and is listed in our call for submissions. You should definitely uh, go to our website and look at the call as you register on the catalyst21.skilled.com and begin entering in your letter of intent. So now is the time for some of your questions. Um, please submit them through the chat box. Yael will then pose them to me. As you're thinking about submitting your questions, I'm gonna put some key reminders up here. Here's that web address uh, that I said, our, uh, the catalyst21.skill.com. That's where you're gonna apply. You can learn more on our website. 
and you can certainly submit your questions to catalyst at wirelessfoundation.org. On our website, you're going to find uh, we have a FAQ sheet for you to review. We also have a call for submissions. And I also suggest that you take a look at our Catalyst 2020 winners just to see who met the criteria last time to give you a sense. I'm going to pause and ask Ayal if we have questions that she would like to, to pose. Yes, hi everyone. Uh, Dory, we do have a few questions just starting to come in, so I'll just start Great. reading. Um, how extensive do you want the operating budget and what it should be the focus of it? That's a great question. Um, I think it should just be a top level budget, um, particularly for this stage, um, looking at revenues and expenses, top level, a little bit of detail, but you don't have to go all the way in. If there are any questions that we have when looking at a budget, we'll certainly be reaching out. Great. Um, another question is, does Catalyst support tech nonprofits? Yes. Catalyst does support tech nonprofits. We support tech nonprofits who are using wireless technology as the primary way of serving the client base. So wireless technology should be integral to the solution that you all have developed. Uh, just going back briefly to the operating budget, we just have a follow up on that, which is that uh, what do we want in terms of the long term growth projections? That's a great question. Um, you know, we understand that a budget is a plan and these things can often change. But as we seek to support emerging change makers, we want to see where you think you're going to grow. Where are the what's the revenue look like? How did your expenses go as you kind of increase the scaling of your solution? Um, I would suggest certainly we would like cost a one, you know, what's happening in the next year. And I would go three to five just as a projection. Uh, we have another question. If the business meets all the criteria and incorporates mental health in its overall mission, along with other things, does that qualify? From, from an issue area focus, it does. I think integral to the solution is the use of wireless. How are you using wireless? If you look at the, um, the Catalyst 2021 winners, you'll see different ways that they have used wireless technology in their solution. Two of those winners did address mental health issues, one with the veteran community and then one with teens of color. Um, one was an app base, the other was text message. So it just depends. Um, but yes, mental health does fall into the health and well being category. Great. Uh, then we have another question. Uh, are DSBE businesses regarding, regarded as underserved? Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, it's I'm, okay. You know what? Let's let's pause on that question for one minute. <laughs> uh, I have another one says uh, disability. Oh. Yes, yes, that would qualify. Thank you for clarifying that. <laughs> I didn't sorry, get I read the question right away. But yes, that would absolutely be appropriate. Perfect. Uh, okay, uh, I have another question. Uh, does it have to be a native app, or can it be web based? It. Yes, you need to, it should be a native app. We do that. We do get that question. Now we have seen applicants and I've seen other folks, you know, social entrepreneurs out there who do have a web page and they also have an app. Um, in those instances, the app is really the driver or the service, the way the services are delivered. So the wireless technology needs to be integral to the solution. It doesn't preclude you from having a website. Uh, we have another question again, also about the budget. Uh, what form should the budget be submitted in Excel, PowerPoint or something else? We're not too prescriptive on that front, whatever you already have it in. Last year we got both and that's totally fine. I think uh, at this moment, we're sort of paused waiting to see if anyone else has any other questions. Sure. I'll just say a few words too, and you know, there are a host of resources on wirelessfoundation.org. Um, you know, check out our FAQs, check out the winners from last year. Um, we've had a lot of interest this year, and we're really excited to see what innovative work you all are doing. So we certainly encourage you to apply. 
It looks like um, we do have another one that came through. Uh, can universities be considered as applicants? Uh, if not, can they be a partner of the primary applicant? That's a great question. I mean, we are definitely looking to support early stage social entrepreneurs and programs. If there is a, you know, we want to, we want to support an organization that a hundred thousand dollar grant or the 50 or 25 will really have a transformative effect. Right? And those early stage social entrepreneurs are. If a, depending on the university, I think it might be hard to make an argument that a university that our um, support would have a catalytic impact, um, but it could be a small program of a university, perhaps, or a partner of a university. I think it all depends. Great. Uh, I have another question. Can you give some examples of awards distinctions you are looking for in the letter of intent, especially if you're an early stage organization? Sure, we've had some applicants who have received local recognition for their work or mentions um, in, you know, online periodicals or things like that. We've had folks who have been participate participants in our accelerator uh, partners programs actually, and that's really helpful to know too, if you were accepted into a program. Um, we found that that was really helpful last year in the process. Um, it's just any kind of recognition or accolades your work has received. Uh, we have another question about sort of defining the specific types of wireless um, that we're looking for. Yeah, we are actually putting an FAQ on our website to specifically address that. Um, if you look at our last winners, as I mentioned, there was SMS texting, um, there was app based. We had um, an organization who was addressing opioid addiction. Um, through a wireless enabled device. So those are the, those are some exa great examples of what we're looking for. I think we are currently, uh, oh, looks like we have a couple others just coming in here. Uh, we, uh, oh. <laughs> uh, we have someone that provides mental health therapies using VR uh, mobile app coupled with a headset. Um, in that particular situation, do they focus on the headset or the app piece or perhaps both? I would say perhaps both. Yeah, explain to us what you're doing. Explain to us the solution. Explain how wireless is having a transformative effect, how wireless is helping you really create the solution that you want to see. I do recall um, a question someone asked previously that I do want to mention as we're kind of zeroing in our time. But someone asked how the funds are supposed to be used. These are unrestricted grants. We recognize that you'll have the most flexibility if they are unrestricted funds to you. So that's what we want to do. We do have um, pretty basic and simple recording, uh, reporting requirements at six months and a year after we award the grant. But these are unrestricted funds. Uh, we have another question. How many applicants did you get uh, in the last round? I think in this uh, case, we can talk about sort of what things looked like last year. Sure. Well, last year was our first year doing this. So it was really kind of dipping our toe in the water. And we weren't really sure, you know, how many applicants there would be. Um, there were less than 50 applicants last year. I can let you know that now we are seeing a lot of interest. It's actually incredible. Um, the number of folks who've already registered. I think it's at least three times, Gail, am I right on that front? That we've Absolutely. seen so far. You know, and we also know it's human nature to wait to the last minute on these things. So we anticipate those numbers will rise. We think it's gonna be a little more competitive this year, um, but that shouldn't dissuade anyone from applying. You know, we do um, like to include our semi, help promote our semi-finalists too. And if the work is great, we really wanna recognize as many as we can. So we certainly encourage you to apply. We have another question. How do we look at measurement and how do we measure impact? Uh, is it the size of the community we expect to see or something else? We are not too prescriptive on the impact. We want you to describe to us the impact that you're looking to have. We do wanna make sure that we have, that the solution is scalable to other communities as well. Um, and that we can have, um, you know that it's going to be a force for change. So 
describe to us the impact that you are seeking to have. I think we certainly want to see um, how we can touch as many American communities as possible in the longer term projections. Uh, great, I think we just have um, one more here uh, and they're just providing an example. They're creating an online speech therapy course that would be delivered through a platform with an app. Does that count? It's delivered through an app that counts. Um, so, you know, yes, apply. Take a look at our call for submissions. Take a look at our FAQ that addresses more of the wireless technology piece. Um, we'd love to see and learn more about everyone's work. You all are doing incredible things. I think we're nearing our time. I'm seeing a couple of other questions come in. Don't worry, we have them and we'll get back to you. Um, and if you have a question afterwards, please don't hesitate to email us, catalyst at wirelessfoundation.org. Follow along on Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook where we have most of our information on Twitter and LinkedIn, um, and we'll be updating, um, updating the website and updating our social channels as we get closer to the April 6th deadline. Thank you all for coming. Good luck. We can't wait to see the amazing work that you're doing. Have a great day.